Hey everyone, in today's video I want to share with you 8 budget prime lenses for Sony that are all under $650 US dollars or under $800 if you're Australian like me. So I have a lot of photo shoot behind the scenes that I haven't uploaded before that I'm really excited to share with you guys today so we can see how these lenses perform out in the field and I also want to share with you what the positives and drawbacks of each of these lenses are so you can save a little bit of coin on your photography equipment. And I also wanted to say that even though I'm giving a negative point for each of these lenses, all these lenses are in this list because I really like them and I enjoyed shooting with them and I liked the photos that they produced. So the first lens that we're going to start off with is the Sony 35mm f1.8. This is a very small and lightweight lens and I was really pleasantly surprised when I used it at a portrait photo shoot. The autofocus performance felt fast on the day of our photo shoot, it never skipped a beat keeping focus on Letitia's eyes even while she was moving around. And coming back home to take a look at the photos, I had a very high ratio of in focus images. This lens is very sharp. I actually compared this lens on the day to the Zeiss 35 f1.4 which is double the price and I found that the images from the Sony 35 were actually sharper the majority of the time. We were shooting on a very bright day with lots of backlight and I didn't experience any chromatic aberration in any of my photos. And I also like that the bokeh looks quite clean. A drawback of this lens is an objective one, but I feel like this lens doesn't have a vibe. It performs well out in the field, it takes sharp images, but I personally feel like it's lacking in having something special to the images that you take. Because of that, this wouldn't be my first choice in a wallet-friendly 35 if I'm mainly a creative portrait photographer. I would rather use this lens for travel, landscapes, street photography, and even family photography because of its sharpness. The second lens we have is a Samyang 35mm f1.4, which is a slightly larger lens, and it's very similar in size to the Zeiss 35 f1.4. This lens performed well during our portrait photo shoot. The IAF kept focus on Tashiana's eyes throughout the afternoon, which was really nice to see since we were shooting towards blue hour and it was getting a little bit dark. Even though this lens was really easy to shoot with, I did notice that there were a few photos with missed focus at the end of the day. So the focus accuracy wasn't as good as I experienced with the Sony 35 f1.8. In saying that, when the photos are in focus, they are very sharp and you can see lots of detail on your subject's face. Unlike the Sony 35 f1.8 though, this Samyang has a whole lot of feeling in the look of the photos it takes, which I absolutely love. This is definitely a lens that I would like to use for creative photography and portrait photography because of that feeling. I also wanted to share a quick comparison between this Samyang and the Zeiss 35 f1.4 as I feel like both these lenses are very very similar to each other. The bucket from this lens is very clean and I can't comment on the chromatic aberration since we didn't really have any sun on the day to be able to see what it would do. One drawback of this lens is the missed focus in some of the photos that I took and the fact that there is now a newer Samyang 35 lens available as well which brings me to the last 35 on this list, which is the Samyang 35mm f1.8. This is another small and lightweight lens, which makes it a great everyday lens that you can take with you everywhere. Especially when you pair it with a camera like the a7C, I feel like it makes such a cute pair together. If you want to watch the full review of this lens and see the a7C photos, I'll leave that video linked down below. On the a7C, the autofocus was a dream. It was extremely fast and very accurate. On the a7 III, autofocus was pretty good as well. The a7 III just has a slower autofocus system compared to the a7C. And the weather took a turn at our shoot where it got super windy, so Steph's hair kept flying in front of her face, making it hard for autofocus to work correctly. But I found on both camera bodies, the sharpness of this lens is beautiful. You can see so much detail, but it's not clinical in my opinion. The bokeh is super clean and I only experienced minimal chromatic aberration in some of the extremely bright backlit shots. This is my favorite 35mm of this list today and I don't actually have any drawbacks for it. In case you are wondering if it's better to go for an f1.4 or an f1.8 lens since we have both of those from Samyang in today's video, I personally don't see a huge difference between depth of field and bokeh with these two lenses. 
When you're using a 35mm for photography and specifically portrait photography, you are after that more environmental look anyway, where you can see more of the background. So to me personally, f1.4 versus f1.8 is not a huge deal. <laughs> And just for fun, here's a comparison between all three 35mm lenses on my list today just so you guys can easily see some of the images side by side. By the way, if you're enjoying today's video, I'd love if you could give it a like and subscribe to my channel because I upload new photography videos every single week. So moving on to some different focal lengths, next we have the Samyang 50mm f1.4. This lens is slightly smaller than the Samyang 35 f1.4 but not as small as all the other lenses in today's video. I really like this lens, it has good autofocus performance and a pretty good ratio of in-focus photos from our shoot in the shade with Tashiana. I use this lens during the same photo shoot as the Samyang 35 f1.4 and while they have similar autofocus performance, I found the 50 had more photos in focus. The sharpness of this lens is again really beautiful for portrait photography specifically. It produces sharp, clear images but it doesn't have a clinical feeling. I really I love how Tashiana's skin looks really soft, but you can still see texture. The bucket is super clean and again, I can't comment on the chromatic aberration since there was no sun on this day. My drawback of this lens is that I wish it had a slightly higher ratio of in-focus images. The rendering of this lens is just so nice for portrait photography, it's really really flattering for skin. However, there were some photos that look fine at first, but when you zoom in, you can notice that it did slightly miss focus on the eyes. This next lens is tied for first place of my favorite lenses in this list, which is the Zeiss 55mm f1.8. I've already uploaded two videos with this lens, which I'll leave linked down below if you guys wanna watch. One is a behind the scenes and the other is comparing it to the Zeiss 50mm f1.4. But in short, I adore this lens. It's small and lightweight and for the price, it produces some beautiful photos. The autofocus performance is great. The IAF is super sticky on the eyes with both the a7C and the a7 III. I love the sharpness of the images, the colors straight out of the camera and nice and vibrant and contrasty, and the bokeh looks nice and clean. I did experience some chromatic aberration with my backlit photos, but they were really easy to correct in Lightroom. The drawback of this lens for me is the lens flare. I know you can put a lens hood on to avoid this, but I regularly shoot without a lens hood for the low contrast and lens flare effect in my creative portraits. The lens flare in this lens looks pretty cool, but I found it to appear frequently in really awkward positions where it would just cover my model's face. I know it's a little bit of a niche drawback, but lens flares and good lens flares are very, very important to me. Just to show you guys as a comparison, I know this lens is very, very expensive, but I love, 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 love the lens flare from the GM 50mm f1.2. The next lens we have is a little bit of a wild card, but I had to include it since it was my first small and budget-friendly lens, the Sony 28mm f2. This is probably the optically weakest lens of all the lenses in my video today, but I still really like it. This lens is great for photographers who do a little bit of portrait photography, but mostly focus on travel photography, video, landscapes, and street photography. While I've done a couple of portrait photo shoots with this lens and I like the results, I wouldn't use this as my main or only portrait lens. The focal length can look a little wonky for portraits and you are limited in only being able to capture mid-length or full body shots as it's a bit challenging with this focal length to get close-ups. The reason I bought this lens is to use it for photo and video while I was traveling. Again, I have a whole video dedicated to this lens that I'll leave linked down below if you guys want to watch, but I couldn't make a budget friendly Sony lens video and not include this little lens. Lastly, we have two 85s. The first one is the Sony 85mm f1.8, which is an incredibly bang for buck lens in my opinion. I compared it in a past video to the GM85 f1.4 and the results were insanely close when you consider the price difference. I've done a couple of photo shoots with this lens and every time the IAF was super sticky on my subject's eye and the autofocus performance was great. I did have slightly more missed focus photos compared to the GM85 f1.4, 
But just keep in mind that this is half the price of that lens. So I still think it was a really good ratio of in-focus images. The portraits I took with this lens are super sharp. There's lots of detail and clarity in these photos and I really like the look of the bokeh. I did experience some chromatic aberrations in the backlit photos, which I corrected in Lightroom. And another thing I wanted to mention is that I love the size and weight of this lens. My only drawback is that since this is an f1.8 lens, I find that the background can look a little busy sometimes with the more cluttered bokeh. Finally, the last lens I want to talk about, which is tied for first place as my favorite with the Zeiss 55, 1.8 is the Samyang 85mm f1.4. This lens, in my opinion, really rivals the Sony GM 85mm f1.4 lens, which is a high-end and expensive lens. For half the price, you are still getting strong autofocus performance, sharp and detailed images, great bokeh, and just looking at these images, it looks like a high-quality lens. Here's a quick comparison between this Samyang and the GM85. These weren't shot on the same day, obviously, but I picked similar looking photos and lighting to be able to compare them. My drawback of this lens, and I have to really nitpick to find a negative about this, is that it doesn't have as good autofocus accuracy as the GM, which again is a lot more expensive. There are some photos here and there that should be in focus, but it does slightly miss sometimes. If you're a portrait photographer looking for an amazing 85 at a good price, I would highly recommend to have a look at this one. So that is my list of eight budget prime lenses for Sony that I recommend. If I had to choose a little kit of lenses to shoot travel and portraits with out of this list, my personal favorites are the Samyang 35mm f1.8, then the Zeiss 55mm f1.8, and finally the Samyang 85mm f1.4. Let me know in the comments if I missed any lenses or if you want to see another video with more budget lenses, maybe we could do zoom lenses next. But otherwise, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I will see you all next time. Bye!